G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Ethereum. Oh so close. It, it is getting ready to break that old all-time high. I'm not sure exactly what it was. It was just over 2000 It might have even been $2,020 or something like that. And it is oh so close. We can see, I mean, you know, Bitcoin again trying to test that $60,000 level. But look, there's a lot of green here. So, you know, things are looking good. But, and I hate to say but, the weekend is upon us. So we just have to wait and see what's going to happen. But have a look at the Bitcoin dominance. It is dropping. I think we are getting ready to go into a real altcoin season. This is where things are going to get, you know, crazy. If 2017 is repeating itself, you're probably going to see Bitcoin dominance down to around about 30 something percent by the end of this and again that might the end of it may be sort of you know december this year january next year and prices are you know they're just going to go mental if and it's a big if 2017 is repeating itself so again i have to say this every video i never offer financial advice it's just personal opinion nothing else i'm not a trained financial advisor in any way shape or form but this is looking like 2017. This is what happened. Bitcoin dominance was high and then it just started to drop. And it'd be Bitcoin it'd run, then it altcoins had run, then Bitcoin had run, then altcoins had run. And then towards the end of it, everything was just running together. Uh, very, very interesting. But let's have a look. Market cap, I mean, have a look at that. 9.5, nearly $1.96 trillion. Again, that... You know, two trillion dollar mark. We're so close at the moment. Literally, basically, forty-two billion dollars away from two trillion. This market is starting to heat up. You know, that stimulus money is starting to find its way in, and with the talk of the new stimulus package, another three trillion dollars that Joe Biden and that are trying to get past. We are likely, again, we can never be 100% sure, but we are likely to see things start to really heat up now. And yeah, again, it will likely be fever pitch by sort of September this year, right through to maybe March next year. You know, again, this could be that super cycle. No one knows, but we've just got to keep our eyes out. And again, remember to take some profits along the way. Don't worry about, you know, un missing unrealized profits. Because that's what they are. They're just unrealized. You're not going to know whether uh, you could have made more money until it's already happened. And likewise, you're not, got, you're not going to know you could have made more money because you sold too late either. So it's just, you know, take profits along the way. You know, just bits and pieces here and there. That, that's, you know, my, my personal opinion. And that's my strategy. Again, I already cashed out 10% when Bitcoin was at 50, uh, just under $47,000. And look, I could have held and I would have been so much more better off now, but I didn't know what it was going to do. And I, yeah, I'm happy with what I've done and I got cash on the side. All right. And again, I've still got plenty of skin in the game. You know, 90% of what I initially put in is still in there. So yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried at all. All right. A lot of green here. Gas prices starting to climb up again. So, you know, that's how you can tell things are really starting to pump. The gas prices are just going to get yeah ridiculous which is you know sad for anyone who wants to use ethereum but you know we've got some more news about that stuff all right what's really pumped in the last 24 hours because we can see i mean it's looking pretty good filecoin is just absolutely nailing it but is it having a bit of a retracement now all right mask network basically 37 percent helium 34 nearly 35 percent dent eos Elrond, Cycoin, Anchor, Binance Chain, Dogecoin, uh, Zcash, BitTorrent, Synthetics Network starting to make another move. I knew this was going to yeah, get its next leg up. Now, again, we can't guarantee that this is it, but it's looking pretty good. 20% over the last seven days, 10% looking very, very nice. Maker, Phantom, you name it. There's heaps of really good gains there. And again, really anything 15% up in 24 hours is a good gain for me. What about losses? Have we got any major losses in the top 100? Uh, not major losses, but we've definitely got some things that are retracing. So BitMax, it's obviously hit its uh, peak. Kasama pulled back a little bit. Uh, Ecomi, and then look, just single digit losses really. Voyager token, 
OMG Network, Pundi X Old. Again, I didn't even know there was a Pundi X New, let alone a Pundi X Old. I thought there was just Pundi X, but anyway. All right, so gains, pretty good. Losses, really not too bad at all. So again, things are looking bullish, but it is Friday. Beware of the, you know, the weekend retracement. That you know, sometimes they can be fairly brutal, and other times they can be not that brutal. And again, like here in Australia, they generally happen on our Thursday night, so that's last night through to our kind of Monday afternoon. Uh, and again, for the last few weeks at least, maybe a month or more, they've been happening on Sundays. Sundays particularly have been the really really bad days. So again, generally at the moment, you can buy Monday morning uh, and pretty much any crypto. Uh, you can sell generally if around about by Thursday night, and again, again, the last you know few weeks to a month or two, you could have sold Saturday night because then it takes a bit of a crash on Sunday, and then you just buy back Monday morning, uh, and you know you would have made a profit. But again, that's not financial advice, and it doesn't always play out like that. That's that's not a trading strategy. That's just something that has been occurring of late, and it always changes. And just when you think, yep, now's the time I'm going to do that, is when it will change. That, that is the market. And why I'm really not a trader, I'm more an investor. Bit of swing trading here on occasions, but that's about it. All right, ETH, let's have a look at it. Here we go. Two, oh, it was $2,004. That's the peak that I saw it get to. So that is about, well, there it got to about 2011 So now it's just, it keeps ranging under that kind of $2,000 mark. And again, we've only wicked up higher before. We haven't had this kind of candle body up here before. But again, this is still early, so it's only four in the morning. So this could easily close uh, down and turn into a red candle with a long red wick like this. But BTC dominance is dropping. You know, the altcoins are starting to bubble and Ethereum uh, is most likely going to have its moment and finally shine and you know get to these prices that everyone thinks it's going to get to you know 5,000 10,000 15,000 20,000 27,000 uh, that some people are talking about we'll just have to wait and see but it is looking pretty good against the dollar right there All right Bitcoin so we can see this didn't play out and look I'm glad but we still don't know this still could play out something like this again we get up to here we get up close around that 60000 sort of dollar mark and then we roll over and we come back down and test something like this. That is completely possible. Whether it's going to do that or not, but look, at the moment, this has been invalidated. So we can get rid of this. Come on, get rid of that. All right, now we'll just have to wait and see. So we've got a clear breakout of this downward channel that we're in. Now we're waiting to see, is it going to fall down over the weekend, come back and retest this again, which would bring it down to sort of, you know, anywhere between sort of 55 and roughly sort of 54, $53,000 over the next few days. And then do we bounce back up or is this, no, we only have a very short dip, uh, again, maybe down 58,000, 50, sort of 7,000 before we then make our way up. You know, is this one of the weekends where the weekend retracement just doesn't happen? Because they do happen on occasions. It's just most of the time they happen. And particularly if a CME gap CME gap gets created over a weekend, they generally fill. Again, not always, but generally. With a pretty high uh, probability rate, whatever CME gap is created over a weekend will get filled. All right, let's get on to some of the stories because there's some really good stories and sort of some scary stories. So this one's a little bit scary. Former chair Jay Clayton tips new Bitcoin regulations are coming. Like we haven't regulated enough. But anyway, former US Securities and Exchange Commission chair Jay Clayton has stated that Bitcoin has not been classified as a security for a long time. But speaking on CNBC's Squawk Box on March 31st, Jay Clayton warned uh, that it's status as a non-security still does not protect it from the uh, imposition of new regulations which he warned could be coming soon i think this is a bit of fud more than anything you know there's already enough sort of regulation out there i'm, I'm not saying there's not any areas within bit uh bitcoin where it could you know use a little bit more regulation but you just don't want to over regulate it uh, you know and stifle the growth it's better to get on board with these things and simply fight against them you know they're going to make plenty of revenue from bitcoin and taxes and all sorts of stuff but if they just you know yeah regulate the absolute backside out of it 
it'll just stifle the growth and you know all countries need uh the tax that they're going to make from cryptocurrencies to help get themselves out of the mess that we're in because of the pandemic and everything like that and that is legitimately every single country needs that you all of a sudden regulate the crap out of it well then there is no taxes well or there's less taxes people will just stay away from it they'll go looking for other opportunities so we need to be careful with that all right mark cuban he was known as being very very bullish on bitcoin themes it seems i mean he's still bullish on bitcoin don't get me wrong but it seems now he's really uh taken to ethereum so mark cuban owns 30 percent ethereum because it's closest to a true currency mark cuban recently stated that bitcoin is a better alternative to gold and compared ethereum smart contracts to the internet boom of the late 1990s so billionaire mark, billionaire mark cuban believes ethereum is the closest thing we have to being a true currency and views not oh, basically just repeating exactly what he just said there all right he's a pretty smart dude you know he's been talking about bitcoin for a while but it kind of took him a, you know he was a little bit bearish on it uh, for a while but it was more at certain prices he was bearish i don't think he was bearish on it overall and you know he's getting right into the nft space uh, particularly involved with the nba and all the rest of it and now it seems he's jumping on the ethereum bandwagon so a lot of people would consider him smart money and i'm not saying you should follow him i'm just saying i'm glad i made the decision to build a, a a good position in ethereum a long time ago uh, not a long time ago but you know over a, uh, a year ago and again i got back into cryptocurrencies in late 2017 and i'm i'm glad that you know i stuck with it and kept doing my research because yeah i'm a lot better off now than i would have ever been before i'm not life-changing money yet unfortunately that would be so nice i'm hoping that maybe by the end of this uh bull cycle i'll have made life-changing money you know the kind where i don't have to worry about working nine to five and all the rest of it but look even if i do i'm sure i'll have made enough to set myself up for you know when i retire <laughs> which is still a long way away but anyway that's the kind of things that i'm thinking about when i'm investing is you know yes i'd like the money to all come to me now and again never have to sort of work again unless i wanted to but as long as I set myself up for in the future, then I'm happy with that. That's more my that's my main game. But if I can make it happen earlier, then sweet. All right, that's me though, and I've, moved, I've gone off on a tangent a bit there. Let's move on. All right, Decentraland now moving to Polygon as well. I mean, is there any platform that's kind of not going to Polygon at the moment? I think they are going to do extremely well. Yes, Polygon has gone up substantially uh, in the last few months. But again, things are just starting to heat up and layer two solutions, excuse me, they are going to continue to do extremely well, particularly until ETH 2.0 can roll out, you know, and we get optimistic roll-ups and all the rest of it because they just keep seem to be, uh, they're being pushed back and pushed back and pushed back at the moment. Now, again, I'm sure it's because they just want to do as much testing as they possibly can, which I love. But, you know, we've been waiting for this for a long time. And the gas fees at the moment, again, I mean, we go back here. It was 203 That really is, yeah, it prices any normal sort of person out. They just cannot afford to use Ethereum at all. It is simply uh, for the big boys. I haven't done anything with Ethereum other than just hold on to it for quite some time. Can't afford to stake any of the coins that... I was staking Kyber Network. You know, they're moving to Kyber 3.0. That's great. Synthetics, they're moving to optimistic roll-ups, but they haven't done it yet. Aave, same thing. They're moving to optimistic roll-ups on Polygon. Haven't done it yet. So, yeah, all my favourite sort of Ethereum projects, other than I'm simply holding the coin, yeah, I can't afford to stake and all the rest of it. Just to change it over, I'm looking at, a, you know, a couple of hundred dollars uh, in gas fees to change over, which then kind of, you know, means that it's going to take me quite some time to make that kind of money back as well so for me i'm just sitting on the sidelines All right we spoke about filecoin there's lots of stuff about filecoin so here filecoin market cap hits 450 billion after the price raises above 230 dollars now where is it right now let's go back to the gains because it was in there i think it might have dropped down a little bit filecoin where are we all right let's go back to the regular 
because it was number nine. Uh, no, nah, it's dropped out already. There we go. It's dropped a little bit. So it was 230 Now it's already back down to uh, $192. So it did jump Litecoin uh, and Chainlink. Now it's fallen back out. And I do think we're probably going to get a bit of a sell-off now from Filecoin. And look, that's to be expected. If you haven't taken some profits already, uh, you possibly still can. And then look to buy in at a cheaper price or just simply hold and uh, buy more when it goes down. All right, so Filecoin, we can go over here. So Filecoin Foundation donated $10 million worth of uh, fill to Internet Archive. So the File Foundation, the Filecoin Foundation, an independent organization uh, orbiting the cryptocurrency Filecoin is donating 50,000 fill tokens worth nearly $10 million at today's prices to Internet Archive. So a little bit of philanthropy in there. Uh, nice to see them doing it. Right, people are asking why is Filecoin pumping? What's been going on? So, Phil is up 530% in the past month and has leapfrogged Link and Litecoin. And again, it's fallen back under those now. There's been lots to embrace the uh, there's been lots of embrace of the Filecoin in the USA. Gemini twins, they're really into it. Uh, for another source uh, of the surge, look to China, which have gone wild for Filecoin mining. Fill the token associated with the decentralized file sharing protocol of the same name uh, from Protocol Labs. That Protocol Labs have developed a few things is surging. Its price has shot up 165% in the past week, and again 530% in the month. Uh, and again, so they're talking about how it had leapfrogged Link and Litecoin, but Link and Litecoin are now back up, and I think Filecoin's most likely kind of hit its peak, and we're going to see a bit of a sell-off now. All right, Coinbase. So we go over here, Coinbase Ventures backing DeFi in the Polkadot system. All right, so Coinbase Ventures, uh, the investment arm of the San Francisco-based digital currency exchange, has thrown its weight behind a layer one blockchain designed to bring full service DeFi to the Polkadot ecosystem. So Polkadot is really starting to grow uh, and really starting to boom. And the more issues that Ethereum has with you know gas fees and scaling, the better polka dot does the better cardano will do and things like that so again i'm i'm not sure when all this you know layer two sort of stuff is really going to start to take off it feels like it's coming but it's feels but it's been feeling like it's going to be uh it's going to get here for quite some time it just doesn't seem to so the investments are focused on Akala, and I spoke about these the other, Akala the other day. The Ethereum virtual machine compatible blockchain that is building a host of DeFi capabilities on Polkadot, as well as uh, Karuara, uh, how do I say that, Karura, Karura, uh, which is building a DeFi ecosystem on Kasama. So Akala has already built four core products for the Polkadot ecosystem. Liquid dot staking, a stable coin, an automated market maker, decentralized exchange, and a sovereign wealth fund. So things on Polkadot are growing and Coinbase are obviously getting behind it. Now, also big news, Coinbase is going public finally. They've announced the date, so it's April 14th. And it's going to happen a few days after it releases its uh, Q1 results. And I'm going to say that it's probably done quite well uh, over the last quarter. And I think that is really going to, you know, push the price up even higher. I wouldn't be surprised if you're looking at two, three, four hundred dollars a share in the Coinbase IPO. That would be my bet. And I've already made my decision. I want to buy some, absolutely, 100%. But I get the feeling like it's going to go crazy at first and then there's going to be a sell-off and I'll look to buy in after the sell-off because I'm just not sure that it will be above the price that it even comes out at. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You know, so be it. It means I either don't get any at all or maybe you know I just have to buy at a higher price. But I think it's going to pump fairly hard on the first few days. People are going to be jumping to get into it and then they're going to try and flip it for some quick cash and then I think it'll probably drop and that's when I'll look to uh, get myself some Coinbase shares. All right, last but not least, Morgan Stanley. They have added, uh, so Morgan Stanley adds Bitcoin exposure to 12 different investment funds. So United States Bank Morgan Stanley 
has updated the prospectus of several institutional funds to reflect potential exposure to Bitcoin. So they're doing it through Grayscale and Cash Settled Futures. Now it's highlighting once again the rapid uptake of digital assets by major investment firms. So in a March 31 filing with the US Secretaries and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, Morgan Stanley declared it has updated the investment policies and strategies section for 12 institutional portfolios. So it's just the big players. They're not doing it for the little people at the moment. It, that will come, but it's going to be the big players first. The updated uh, enables Morgan Stanley Institutional Fund, Inc. to add Bitcoin to several portfolios via Grayscale Bitcoin Trust and Cash Settled Futures. And here's the 12 different portfolios that may have exposure to Bitcoin at some time. But they're also saying a fund may at times have no ex exposure to Bitcoin. So that makes me think that they are looking to get in now and they're, they're going to uh, dump when they believe the bear market's ready or they've hit their price targets, whatever it means. So it doesn't sound like they're really buying for the long term, at least in all of these. Some of them are just going to want to flip Bitcoin uh, and any cryptocurrencies and others, because they said they're getting into the grayscale stuff, they may sort of hold on to for longer term. We'll have to wait and see. All right, so my question to you today is the Coinbase IPO. Are you going to buy some Coinbase shares? And if you are, do you plan on buying straight away? Or are you like me? Are you going to sit back and wait and see if it has a real big pump and then a drastic pullback? Which happens a lot of times when markets are like this. But in saying that, that's more cryptocurrency markets. They'll pump really hard at first and then have a big sell-off. Uh, in stocks, not so much. They don't see it as much. I'm not saying they don't see it at all. But they, yeah, they don't always have those dramatic kind of price swings. It might pump up a little bit, but then not fall back quite as hard as what cryptocurrencies will generally do. So yeah, let me know your thoughts below. Are you investing in Coinbase? And are you going to buy straight away? Are you going to wait for a holdback? Because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to wait for a holdback. But that is a stock that I absolutely want to get into. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Things are looking pretty good at the moment and hopefully everyone's on that gain train and I'll see you next time.